In 1965, the Imperial Cricket Conference became the International Cricket Conference and admitted its first associate members, the United States of America, Fiji and Ceylon. 19-year-old Tumian captain Anura Tenakon became the youngest player to represent Ceylon when he made his debut against Mike Smith's MCC team in October 1965. Anura Tenakon to me, I think he's probably the most accomplished batsman Sri Lanka or Ceylon and Sri Lanka together has produced because he was um, the typical test match cricketer. My batting technique uh, was uh, fashioned by uh, a coach in college, the late Mr. Lassi Abhevardhana. I think he, he's the one who really uh, taught me uh, quite a lot of good uh, habits or things about batting. Uh, and uh, I think one of the most important things he taught me was how to really position myself for a shot and uh, the use of feet uh, when batting. Uh, one of the key factors, uh, sort of unknown, is the fact that as a young kid, uh, he uh, used to play on the corridors of St. Thomas's uh, with uh, a foot tool and a marble. So it gave him that uh, ability to watch the ball all the time to try and uh, hit the middle of the ruler which uh, he converted to bat and ball, the cricket bat and cricket and ball. In the first match against the MCC in October 1965, Lionel Fernando made his international debut and scored a stylish 40. Against the MCC, I top scored with 14 runs and I had to face some very good uh, bowlers. I did really well against that, uh, against the MCC, yeah. In the second match, MCC were restricted to 127, with Neil Chanmugan claiming five wickets for 26 and Ian Pierce taking three. Neil Chanmugan, well, he was, he was such a bowler. He, he, he bowled hard, he tried his best all the time. I remember that, that year when we played against uh, MCC, he, he had a lot of the big batsmen just floundering. Neil Chamugam got a lot of wickets in that match. He bowled exceptionally well. And uh, I thought we were going to win that match. After a rain delay, the Reed brothers continued batting and tried to lift Salon to its first win against MCC. But further rain stopped play soon after Ronnie Reed reached his 50. Unfortunately, it rained. It rained and otherwise we would have won that match. If Ronnie batted well, we came in after rain and um, I found that Ronnie was getting close to 50 and it was coming towards the end. And um, so what I did from my part was whenever I got the strike, I pushed it into a gap and gave uh, Ronnie the strike. Uh, so he took the opportunity, went down, hit a few fours and got a 50. Well, I, I picked up to nearly 50 or something, and then it was my brother who gave me that 50, buddy, buddy with me. I think he, he pushed the ball and let me go to the other side, face the, face the rest of the over and get my 50 run. The one thrill for me was coming out to bat after the rain, coming out to bat with Ronnie. That was something I really treasured. The appearance of Buddy and Ronnie Reed against the MCC was the first instance of brothers playing together for Salon since the Kellarts appeared against India in 1932. The Reed brothers, the five brothers, they were they came from a family which which dominated, I think, sports. Buddy Reed was a great all-rounder. He was not only a cricketer, he also captained Sri Lanka at table tennis. Ronnie Reed was the most talented, but Buddy Reed achieved the most. Claude Reed, I have to also place on record, he went to Australia and he played great cricket. So there were the three outstanding uh, Reed brothers, but there were two others as well. When Salon toured Pakistan in 1966, Fitzroy Crozier, one of the three new caps, made an immediate impact, taking six wickets in Pakistan's first innings in Lahore and seven in the corresponding innings in Karachi. Pakistan was quite a tour because that was the first time I played for Sri Lanka and we were on tour. The first test at Lahore, we batted, uh, we batted second, but I had to bowl 64 overs. And then at the end of it, 
had to go out and bat to pitch as I was the opener. One of the highlights of the tour was the unbeaten 120 by Michael Tassira in the third unofficial test against Pakistan in Karachi. Up to then I had had a very poor season. The, I hadn't scored any runs in the first two tests. This was challenging. They had a good attack. But uh, it was one of those days when everything seems to go right from the beginning. And uh, I was really happy to end up with 100. It gave me a lot of satisfaction. Stylish left-hand batsman Clive Inman, who played professional cricket for Leicestershire, played his last match for Ceylon on the 1966 tour of Pakistan. Clive and Stanley were the two professionals who came down because they were both playing for Leicestershire in England. It was a pity that Clive didn't get going because he was a very, very good fielder as well as a good left-hand batsman. He was, a, he was an attacking left-hand batsman. He was really a good bat. Clive Inman, very dogged. Very loving, fierce sort of batsman. Very hard. Oh, he used to punish anything on the offside. Um, I didn't see him hit too much on the leg side, but the shots on the off were brilliant. Square drives and, and cover drives. And a beautiful field there. The West Indies, captained by Garfield Sobers, played a three day match against Michael Tassira's Salon in January 1967. Sobos was a great cricketer, what, a, what an all-rounder he was. He was the, easily the best all-rounder. Michael was also a very good cricketer, good all-rounder. The West Indies uh, coming to Sri Lanka was one of the highlights of my own career, really, because I wasn't an opening bat. We were short of an opener and ended up being the open. Walking up to the wicket, Rohan Khanna decided to walk with me because he was backward at a short leg. And uh, he kept on telling me that Hall had never seen a wicket as green as this. When I got picked to play against West Indies, Edward Kellat, he was my great coach. He told me, Lionel, he had got a very high back lift. You won't stand a chance against uh, Wesley Hall. So you know what, he advised me, just keep pushing till you get set. I did that and it worked for me. Wesley Hall was easily the best bowler. But the, out of the spinners, landscapes, he was great. Once the greenness went off that wicket, it became a pretty good batting wicket. And then, of course, Michael came in and it was a great innings to watch. The match against the West Indies is especially remembered for the last wicket partnership of 110 by Ian Pierce and Neil Chamugam. Last wicket partnership of about 110, it was top class now. They played the, uh, the, the bowlers uh, like... Uh, it, the good balls they faced really well. Any bad balls they attacked. We really enjoyed watching. When the West Indies went to bat, it was a case of my being in the slips and really watching some great innings from Sobers and others. I didn't do too well with the ball because there was nothing that that wicket did for me. But it was, when, from the spectator point of view, it was a great game because both sides entertained the crowd. Salon played its first one-day international when Colin Cowdery's MCC team visited in January 1969. Michael Tassira won the toss and decided to field, with Kahil Kamua and Sahar Bandu entrusted with the new ball. Sahab and I opened for Sri Lanka and Ceylon for about six to seven years. He was my opening partner in all those matches. It was a difficult task for me to bowl with Sarbanto because he finishes his overs within two minutes. I was com a gentle pace compared to his pace, but, but I was more of a spin bowler. But when he bowled from the other end, there, was, there were times when my overs were completed quickly and I was not able to give, give him a breathing space. But you can imagine his speed. I think at that time he's in the fastest and people say he was the fastest bowler produced by Sri Lanka after DSD or something. Kheokapo Sabandhu combination was very vital because Sabandhu was on the spot all the time as a left arm leg spinner plus he could swing the ball with the new ball. Kheokapo was a sheer pace. In a sort of a limited over game it is the onus is on the bowlers to try and restrict the batsman to getting runs. And we were working on the principle that if we can keep them 
to four runs and over, we have done well. Our plan was to curtail them to a smaller total, which we did. They got out for 234 or something like that. Tom Devon, I can't remember, get him, him bowled. He played across the uh, wicket and got him bowled. I remember the KL Gamma clean bowling Tom Gravey in the limited over game. It was a beauty and Gravey was surprised by the speed. At around the 40th, 45th over, I think there was a break. And at that break, uh, Cowdery's team hadn't made enough runs. And uh, the manager of uh, the team made a request from Sri Lanka board at that time to try and extend this game, which was fixed for 50 overs to 60 overs, which they did. And uh, at the end of it, England or MCC, which uh, touring England teams are called, uh, made um, something just in excess of 230. After restricting MCC to 236 off their 60 overs, Buddy Reed and Ranjit Fernando opened the innings for Salon. Buddy Reed, a dependable bat and a slow scoring batsman. Ranjit Fernando, a very good wicketkeeper and a hard hitting, brilliant opening batsman. Ranjit is a dashing bat. Uh, if the ball is there to hit it, he will hit it. Buddy Reed, who was uh, so my opening partner, and I uh, put on a very, very sound partnership. We got 118 runs, I think, for the first wicket. And firstly, I think against the opening bowlers, there was Jeff Jones. Um, he, uh, he was left hander. He was pitching it a little bit short. Ken Barrington had a shot where he hit the ball over slips. I thought, well, that's a good idea. I'll try that one. And so with Jeff Jones, I got a few fours hitting over the slips. I was moving well enough to move down the wicket to Hobbs and um, hit a few fours off him. The rest of the time, um, I was getting twos, but Ranjit was getting fours. At, in any stage, in any game, when one is batting, when the light is fading, it always makes it very difficult. So I know that Gulam would have been thinking the same way as I was hoping and praying that the umpires would intercede at some time because uh, we didn't want to lose a wicket because of the light that was fading. So we were more than happy when the game was terminated at that stage because of light. And uh, we won quite comfortably, uh, sort of uh, making uh, just two runs short in a much less over. So we were awarded uh, that game and that was the first time Sri Lanka had won uh, a one-day game and that in their first one-day game outing. We celebrated uh, with a few beers and uh, I think Michael is very proud and happy that we beat them. The limited over game seemed to help our cricket, help our type of cricket. And uh, I would say the team was far more confident. After defeating an MCC side for the first time in 87 years of international cricket, Salon played a three-day match against their illustrious visitors with Buddy Reed at the helm for the first time. The Kumar Asami, who was a selector, he came into a dressing room and he said, Michael Tisela won't be playing today. Uh, he's injured and your captain will be Buddy Reed. And then somebody said, you better go out and toss. Colin Cowdery is waiting to toss. And so I had to take my pads off and I went. I had no coin either. And then, uh, so I pulled out a coin from my purse and I think it was a 20 cent coin or something like that and, and tossed and uh, we won the toss. Anura Tenakon scored his first century against a test playing nation and became the first Salon player to score a century in an unofficial test. He scored 101 against an imposing MCC attack featuring John Snow, David Brown and Derek Underwood. Anura Tenakon is such a reliable bat and he just went on and on and on. It was a slow innings but sure. And he got to 100 and unfortunately he got run out. Right-hand batsman Dhanasiri Virasinghe, playing his last international for Salon, scored 22 runs and gave valuable support to Anura Tenakon. That innings of 22 was gathered mainly in singles because I faced a lot of Derek Underwood. It was never easy to get 
going against him because he was one of the world's best left arm leg spinners. Um, Anura was had plenty of time for his shots and he was technically absolutely one of the best. On that day, the way he mastered the English spinners and the paces was amazing. And he went on and on. And I remember the quality of his batsmanship because he hardly gave the English bowler a chance. And he was very rarely beaten as such. Anur Jankorn is a great bat and he's a technically correct bat. And he has a very good uh, on drive. Uh, fared extremely well. And um, in fact, uh, created quite an impression where I think uh, the responses from the English uh, media was of uh, a very, very high nature. When Australia, under the leadership of Bill Laurie, toured in 1969, Salon restricted Australia to 197 in the three-day match, with Neil Chamugam taking five wickets for 47. We were all accurate bowlers, and runs had to be earned against that attack. Chamugam actually bowled very well in that match. He's one of the best of spinners Sri Lanka produced. And he took five wickets. Johnny Gleason, I you know, he was a weak batsman. And in the last ball of the day, I thought of yoking him. And I bowled him, bending a yoker to him. Buddy Reid, playing in his last match for Salon, top scored in both innings. I got called up by the selectors and said, you haven't made a bill, but we want you to open. We want you to open, particularly because we are putting Sunil Vettumuni in. It's his first match. And we want him to see how you bet. We want him. You, we want you to show him how to bet. That was a great compliment. Salon had three new caps when MCC visited in February 1970, including Mayvan Pires, an outstanding swing bowler. Mayvan is a brilliant in swinging bowler, and very fast. He brought in additional strength for our bowling power. Mayvan bought a lot of speed and movement. With KL bowling at the other end, the Sri, Sri Lankan side had two bowlers who could bowl quick. And Mayvan was a very useful to play, he could bat and field as well. MCC batting first were outed for 132, with Jeff Boycott sensationally bowled by Kahil Gamua from the second ball of the match. The ball was well known to have life at the beginning of a match. I was fielding at first slip at that time uh, and uh, uh, Boycott completely missed the line and uh, it took his stumps. Boycott came into bat as he usually does, um, well, the master of batting more or less. And with the second ball, Gale bowled him really a lightning bolt. And, uh, because bat was still up in the air. He was going to play down. Before he could bring his bat down, bang! The ball had gone through, hit the stumps, and he was out. He was quite shocked. Kehl was just warming up. It was a beautiful outswinger. It beat Boycott on the outstretched defensive stroke and took the off bail. Boycott got bowled in the second ball of the day. And actually I was warming up. And I think Boycott misjudged the ball, which swung outside and took his off bail. I also chipped in with two wickets. I remember initial wickets uh, and it was great for me because uh, I got Hampshire out, caught by Tisra himself. And then after that, Keith Fletcher, as you know, was one of the best batsmen England produced at that time. And then he was clean bowled by me, the very first ball he faced. So. I think Sri Lanka were off to a very fine start. Wicketkeeper batsman Herbert Fernando played his last match for Salon when MCC toured in 1970. It was my last match. I mean, the first innings I played uh, for with absolute dead bat, but uh, I don't know the ball, how the ball carried to leg like, slip and as you out. In the second innings, I was desperate to make a beginnings and finish with a 50. I started off hitting Arnold for a four, and. Uh, Unfortunately, next ball, David Hine <laughs> hit a ball to cover and ran running into my crease. Had I stayed in the crease, he would have been out. I walked out and <laughs> gave my wicket. It was very distressing to get out, run out in my last innings. <laughs> he was uh, absolutely brilliant, considered to be the best in Asia. A person called Leslie Smith 
who did the English tour of India and Pakistan and Sri Lanka. He rated me the best in Asia. But at that moment, I was at my brilliant best. When MCC toured in 1973 under Tony Lewis, the board's President Eleven, led by Michael Tassira, won the limited over encounter thanks to a fine 61 from Anura Tenacon. This second victory against the MCC in four years showed beyond all doubt that the standard of cricket in Sri Lanka had improved considerably since Michael Tassira took over the captaincy in 1964. Full credit goes to Michael, who handled the side exceptionally well. And uh, we were all happy that England were beaten. And these are the matches that brought uh, to focus uh, what Sri Lanka was capable of. And these are the matches on which Sri Lanka cricket finally uh, uh, built its uh, image and was able to get this recognition. India, under Ajit Wadika, visited in January 1974 and the tour is remembered for the skillful batting display of captain Anura Tenakon. That series against uh, Ajit Padekar's team uh, had a very, very formidable Indian team, including uh, guys like Gavaska in the early days, and uh, they had Mankad uh, and uh, sort of uh, Solka, all players who really took Indian cricket forward under Vadeka, and Vadeka, you know, uh, was a captain who uh, was one of their most successful ones. We came into this test match uh, against a powerful Indian side, uh, carrying Sunil Gavaskar, who was rated as one of the finest opening batsmen in the world as ever seen. And uh, it was a challenge for me to bowl at him because I was also at bowling at my peak at that time. And uh, I remember uh, g giving him a in swinger and uh, he feeding on Ratana uh, at short leg. And wasn't I thrilled because the unretainer the ball flew to him uh, and uh, made a very good catch. My first over and I bowled at Ajit Wadeka, was a left-hander. He went to uh, drive me and he was caught at the car point. And I was thrilled to get a wicket in my first international uh, cricket match. I remember making a fairly big, fairly good partnership with unretainer Cone. He was the captain of the side and I was his vice-captain. The unwritten account looked a picture of confidence batting with me. And I attempted a big hit quite unnecessarily. Following his 131 in the first match, Anura Tenakon scored an unbeaten 169 to become the first Sri Lankan batsman to score centuries in successive unofficial tests and finished the series with a startling average of 163. The second test match uh, was played at SSC. I remember quite well the match. Uh, the feature of the match was undoubtedly a Tenacorn's uh, century. When he came to the final day of the match of the uh, four-day unofficial test, uh, we were left with about five wickets standing and we had to wipe off about another 120 runs to avoid the innings defeat. Uh, I was not out on 70 the previous day, and uh, not many people gave us a chance of the game going beyond lunchtime uh, on the final day. Anwar Tenakun, as uh, we always uh, mentioned, was one of those calm and collected uh, cricketers. He had already taken the job of captaincy from Michael Tissera, and uh, he was uh, someone who led purely by his batting. On the third day, from T to disclose of play, I batted with Anwar Tenakon, trying to hold the Sri Lankan sides together on a pitch that had begun to turn. And Venkatragavan was spinning viciously, but I was able to hold my end going with Anwar Tenakon. And uh, we stayed together to the close of the third day. The person I received the innings with on the fourth day was uh, Mevan Piris, more known for his fast bowling. And um, we, uh, when we were going out to bat, we told each other, let's uh, um, make the Indians fight, for, uh, fight to get us out. And uh, we just, uh, we did just that and uh, just kept on batting and uh, uh, the Indians uh, were getting frustrated that they were unable to uh, get us out quickly. I was determined to hold my in and uh, I had full confidence in being able to do that and allow Tenakon to hold the other end and uh, save this match. I was absolutely determined to do that. And uh, ultimately when we were bowled out, India was left 
with the with the target and uh, they lost uh, four wickets uh, in in the process so i was able to get uh, uh, both openers out including gavaskar uh, very cheaply gavaskar went on the back foot and in swing wrapped him right in front of the stumps and he was ruled lbw and uh, we were really able to give india a few anxious moments in the mere fact we came close to uh, saving the game i think gave me a, a lot of satisfaction and uh, undoubtedly i would uh, put that down as my best effort uh, for sri lanka the tour to pakistan in 1974 under anura tenakon was the first overseas tour for a number of talented young cricketers who made a significant contribution to sri lankan cricket during the transition to full test status if one looks at uh, again the development uh, the history of sri lankan cricket that tour of pakistan was um, probably the watershed and um, to a great extent enhanced our chances to a great deal it was a very young team the first tour as captain to pakistan uh, in 1974 Uh, really the side uh, didn't have much experience there was a lot of newcomers into the side and uh, uh, i as captain and also the senior players uh, it fell on our shoulders to uh, sort of mold these uh, youngsters and uh, knit them into a, a, a strong combination uh, which we were able to do all the players had uh, fallen off and uh, new players have been brought in we saw plenty of new names there was bandula varnapura sunil vettamuni uh, there was uh, uh, players like ajit de silva lalit kaluperma ds de silva and tony opath of course had been playing with us there was uh, david hain david also went on that tour of uh, pakistan but unfortunately uh, sort of uh, he moved out uh, of sri lanka and went away Uh, probably at a time when he could have uh, probably given a little bit more to sri lanka cricket we went on that tour and that you know gave us a first impression of uh, how tough uh, a tour to pakistan and tour to india would go, go to be and also how tough uh, the difference between the normal domestic first class season in sri lanka uh, gopal and uh, tournament matches as well as uh, the other tour that we played there the huge difference and uh, that's the advantage we had and i think that open up quite a lot of uh, uh, doors to a lot of youngsters in the first test in lahore sri lanka amassed 369 in reply to pakistan's first innings of 302 on that tour uh, one uh, saw these younger cricketers showing ability which uh, was apart from their skills a lot more mature in uh, terms of what uh, they were able to do in the second test at karachi left arm spinner ajit de silva took five wickets as pakistan floundered for 216 in response sri lanka scored 265 with a glorious unbeaten 98 by jayantha senavaratna being the highlight in pursuit of 176 for their first victory in pakistan sri lanka fell short by 17 runs test in karachi the second test match uh, saw the game swinging from side to side Uh, and ultimately pakistan pulled it off we were unable to pull off that second test i think due to uh, lack of experience in winning overseas the one uh, innings that i would like to recall was uh, 98 scored by janta senira that series was what uh, prompted abdul hafiz card the pakistan uh, president of their board to lobby very very strongly in favor of sri lanka and uh, Sri Lanka was um, to a great extent uh, uh, being considered very seriously for full membership and uh, I think uh, India too supported it greatly and uh, that probably saw a uh, emergence of a new Sri Lankan team when uh, uh, the late Abdul Hafiz Kada uh, sort of proposed to the ICC that we be considered for full test status um, yeah, after that i think uh, the icc um, with every game that we played uh, wanted to uh, assess and see whether we had uh, had achieved the required standard to uh, to be given the status so every game after that became very crucial for us and we played those games under tremendous pressure